everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Roshni and this channel is called Beti Grew Up. It's normally dedicated to personal growth, self-care, and self-worth. So if you haven't watched the previous videos in this playlist, I highly recommend it. But in this video specifically, we are talking about what anti-racism actually is. Throughout this playlist, I've been referring to a talk Dr. Ibram X. Kendi and Jamel Hill, and I will link that in the description below, but I did want to share Dr. Kemby's definition of anti-racism. Essentially, he starts by breaking down the idea of what is not racist. So he says that, you know, you talk to white people all the time, or you talk to people all the time, and all they say is, oh, I'm not racist. But a lot of the times, these people don't even have an exact definition of what racism is, right? So there's no such thing as not racist. But what is not racist is actually actively being anti-racist. And I absolutely love this idea because we've gotten so comfortable kind of navigating around racism or assuming that racism is just, you know, this ambiguous thing that's out there that isn't actually, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives and doesn't actually affect us. And a lot of white people really get away with thinking that or feeling that or they feel like um, racism just exists in, you know, people being mean to one another or people uh, putting one another down or saying, you know, the N-word or saying, you know, some sort of racial slur. And while obviously that is a part of racism, we're completely ignoring the structural and systemic racism that people of color face constantly and especially black Americans face. Dr. Kembe defines anti-racism as a collection of anti-racist policies that lead to racial equity that are substantiated by anti-racist policies. And therefore, racism is a collection of racist policies that lead to racial inequality that are substantiated by racist ideas. And I really love just how black and white it is, right? Right? It's racism and it's anti-racism and for too long we've gotten comfortable in this middle space of not really naming when things are racist but not really being against racism either and I think it's time that we give that a pass and move on and admit that we should either be racist or anti-racist because you can't be not racist. There's no middle ground and you have to play a role in actively dismantling the systemic oppression and systemic racism that is occurring within our country. And it's not just in one area, you know, this exists in housing, job search, college applications, intergenerational trauma. There are so many different aspects in which systemic racism plays a part. To share an example of what anti-racist policy can look like like can actually be the idea of reparations. One statistic is that the average white family has 10 times the wealth of the average black family and white college grads have over seven times the wealth than black college grads. It also says that in 1860, the value of $3 billion was assigned to the physical bodies of black Americans used as free labor and production. While we can't compare these two topics or these two aspects, they are vastly different, but just to put it in different terms, we can relate to somewhat of this um, in Indian history when the British colonized. So, for example, the Indian economy was crippled by British colonization because under British rule, the Indian economy paid for development of um, factories in, in the United States, we paid for industrial and military strength of Britain, and we used our manpower to fight wars for Britain. So my great-granddad was actually um, also fought for the British in World War II. And so, you know, we paid using our lives, we paid using our economy and our finances, um, and so there were so many ways in which India as a country contributed to the growth and development of the UK, of the United States, and in no way did it come back and actually benefit India. And when we weren't able to meet these financial demands, not only were we indebted to them, but we also had to pay interest on the debt. While it's not the same situation at all, and these are completely different scenarios, we can understand how someone else can can come in and utilize your resources and utilize what you have built and completely turn that around to benefit themselves and to leave you a million rungs down the ladder, right? And so again, I'm not trying to compare these two or say that they're the same, but you can see the relevance and the importance of reparations in both of these separate scenarios. The reason that reparations are also needed, not only does it cause, you know, 
uh, political and financial disadvantages, but there's also a lot relating to mental health that can affect uh, generations. So for example, you know, there is intergenerational trauma and with things like PTSD, they can actually pass, be passed down. PTSD can cause a chemical mark on your DNA and that can be passed down to future generations of your family. And something else that factors into this is called shared stress, right? So there was an example of um, black parents having to talk to their children about police brutality and how unfair that can be and how that shared stress is something that it exists within that group but no one else outside of that group can understand. So no other ethnicity or race in this country can understand exactly what black people are going through right now, obviously, and we, while we can educate ourselves, we're not living that experience and that's something that be, can, can become a shared stress within a community that is then passed down in terms of, you know, passing down fear and passing down worry because there are legitimate fears and there are legitimate things to be worried about, you know? And so all of that causes these major generational effects on top of all the other disadvantages at every single level, all starting all the way from education and housing and going all the way into, you know, um, who's who's picked for jobs and um, how you wear your hair in the workplace. All of these are major issues that are caused by racist policies that we are not acknowledging. That's why it's so important to move the conversation towards racism and anti-racism instead of just assuming that racism is out there but not really knowing what it is and not what it looks like and not being able to recognize it and not knowing if you play a part in it, right? And the last thing that I wanted to end this video on was the idea of equity versus equality. Equality is defined as everyone has the same opportunities and equity is defined as various levels of support to achieve the most fair outcome you can. But not everyone needs the same resources. It wouldn't make sense to give everyone in the world colorblind glasses because a lot of people in the world aren't colorblind and it wouldn't be useful to them. But for people who are colorblind, it would be extremely useful to have that resource. So like I mentioned, those statistics, it's showing that the wealth that white families have is so much greater. And even with the same resources of having a college degree, white graduates still have seven times the wealth of black college grads. So on these different levels, there's still so many disparities. We haven't focused on enough anti-racist policy and enough reparations and other things like that that balance the scale to make it a more equitable place we right now have a chance to extend that equity. We can start using our voices and our platforms and our influence, our bodies and our monetary fund, our ability to vote. And we need to do all of this alongside black Americans. We need to pause and listen to what black Americans are saying in order to achieve equity in this country for black Americans and for other marginalized groups of people. And the only way we can do that is again, to stand together, like I mentioned in my last video, and to recognize what we're doing in our own community that is, that is actually benefiting the way that society is currently set up. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Stay safe, stand together, and happy healing.